a little bit about uh, you here today in Cockwell, North Carolina, for the wards of manufacturing. What can we do um, as youth providers to, to better prepare our youth going forward? We have to reintroduce our young people to manufacturing. For so many years, manufacturing was perceived as dangerous and dirty, and something that you would do if you didn't have a whole lot of other options. And when the manufacturing uh, economy in this country began to decline, parents started encouraging their children away from it. So now that we've seen the resurgence of U.S. manufacturing, we've got a generation of young people and their parents who think, again, this is manufacturing that was dark and dirty and dangerous and something that you shouldn't aspire to. And when you walk into any U.S. advanced manufacturer now, you see computer screens, you see technology, you see robots, you see CNC machines, you see clean manufacturing floors that would just astound you. As a matter of fact, I had a CEO of a company who said when they recruit, they go on college campuses and they bring the, the potential students in high schools into the control room and it looks like the Xboxes and the, and the, and the PlayStations that the kids are playing with because that's what manufacturing is about. So it really is re-educating our young people, but you have to start with the parents and the teachers that it is not something to only do if you don't have any options, but manufacturing is something to aspire to. And while you don't necessarily need a four-year degree, you do need skills beyond a high school diploma. Not everyone's going to go to college. Some people are going to go and you're going to need people with PhDs and MBAs and, and law degrees. But other people, for a number of reasons, are going to say, well, after high school, I'm ready to go into the workforce. But we want them to go into the workforce prepared with marketable skills uh, that allow them to walk onto the manufacturing floors, make a great living, uh, make benefits, continue to provide for the family. So it's really about reintroducing manufacturing and getting young people excited about what manufacturing is today. And, and what, what, can, what can we do uh, to introduce the manufacturer to the youth? That, that needs that's a, that's a great uh, uh, question. A couple of things. One is getting the manufacturers to come into the schools and, 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 and on career day and talk about what they do. Talk about the things that you know fascinate kids. But more important than that is to the extent that you can get the kids out of the classroom into some of the manufacturing shops. And I know you know you have to be careful about the the, the you know how you bring them in and, 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 and do it in an appropriate way. But to get students, my son is four years old. And he has videos that I've gotten from, you know, auto manufacturing, truck manufacturing plants, and he's just fascinated by the robotics and all the things that are going on that are very similar to what he sees on our iPad or our iPhone. So it's really about getting the uh, folks on the floor to talk about manufacturing, how excited it is, uh, they're excited about what they do, and they, again, getting the kids out of the classroom and reintroducing them to manufacturing, and also relating it to, uh, you know, the, the devices they use, you know, again, the, the, the iPhones and the Galaxy tablets and all the other things that really uh, are more along the lines of what are used in manufacturing today. Mr. Williams, is, is there anything else, and th thank you for answering sure. this question, is there anything else that, that you would like to say that would, would definitely help us mold our young people? The sky's the limit. You know, I'm just really inspired and encouraged by what I've seen here today. It was great to see the young people excited about manufacturing, uh, understanding that using their imagination. And again, I, I don't want to oversimplify it, but I, you know, with a four-year-old son, as I see him, you know, play with Legos and, and things, putting things together and taking them apart and understanding the dynamics, he is engaged in the very rudimentary basics of understanding physics and, and engineering, keeping him excited about that as he gets older and making it relevant and making it fun so he doesn't get in back to the grade and say, oh, calculus is hard or I, I don't want to do this. This is something that I should be intimidated by as opposed to making it a natural extension of what he's doing. So to the extent that, again, we can get young people immersed in that, and it's not going to be for everyone, but we shouldn't think of it as, oh, you know, go to the plant, you're going to come home filthy and dirty and your back's going to be broken and it's just something that doesn't provide you a whole lot of options or opportunities. Nothing could be further from the truth when you look at U.S. manufacturing, where it is today and where it's going over the next several years. Wow. And for you for you to travel all across the United States, what, what was, the, I guess, the greatest moment for you today? to be here in Cockroach. Really uh, seeing the young people and their excitement to see the collaboration between manufacturers and school districts, uh, to see it take shape in a way that continues to uh, you know, highlight the, the Charlotte region as a an advanced manufacturing sector. So I think what I was most inspired by is, is just the young people and a level of support that I saw here. Uh, you know, collaborating, even for those that weren't winners, they were finalists. Uh, and you look at the pictures and you see uh, you know, the diversity, uh, young and old, diversity of backgrounds and experiences. That's what most excited me and most impressed me about.